It is Wednesday, my dudes, and you know what that- hang on a second. It is not Wednesday. This is not a Planet Coaster video. That's right, It. I, you have been duped. I have tricked you. Not really, because the title and thumbnail were, I think, accurate to this video's content. It's a crossover episode between my Planet Coaster series and my Kerbal Space Program series. We're going to be building a theme park ride in Kerbal Space Program. It's going to be a Ferris wheel. And then on Wednesday, we're going to build a Ferris wheel in Planet Coaster. Spoiler alert. It's going to be great. Actually, Ferris, <laughs> uh, a lot of people have been asking you to build a, th a theme park ride in Kerbal Space Program for a while, mainly in the comment sections of my Planet Coaster series, um, which is, you know, by far and away the most popular series on this channel. So I thought, you know what, that's actually kind of a good idea. I never really knew a good way to kind of implement it or even what kind of ride to build without mods. But of course, now we have the Breaking Ground DLC that adds rotors. We can do a, a fairground ride pretty easily. And I was trying to think of various different ones. Most of them would be some kind of flat ride, like not a roller coaster, a revolving ride, because we've got motors. Things like drop towers and stuff would be quite difficult. So it was kind of a choice between something like a merry-go-round or a chair swing or something. But in the end, I decided to go for the Ferris wheel just because Ferris wheels are quite kind of easy to make. They work well with KSP's symmetry mode. And, you know, it's one of the most iconic rides ever in the history of theme parks and just rides in general so this would be kind of a good a good thing to uh to build and we've actually finished building the <laughs> we've actually finished building the ferris wheel already actually uh, you can see me testing it here the i went for the mark 2 mark 1 passenger bays as the carriages and i've got those batteries underneath them just to add a sort of ballasts just because unfortunately rotors in ksp aren't very you can't do very slow speeds, basically. The slowest speed you can do is five revolutions per minute, which is actually still quite fast, especially for something like this. So I did those batteries to add some weight to the carriages just so they, just so they, just so they don't swing around whilst the thing's rotating to keep them relatively level. Unfortunately, it didn't work quite well because and I, I probably should have realized this at the time of testing, but I tested this thing on Kerbin, which has a gravity of 1G, but I'm not actually going to be, you know, building this on Kerbin because then I'd just be launching the vessel and then, you know, it's just done. Granted, I could strap it to an aircraft or something and land it somewhere else in, on Kerbin, but that's not... This is Kerbal's space program. We should probably send it to space. And, you know, the Mun is as good a place as any. Sadly, the Mun's gravity is lower than that of Kerbin, though. So there is some rocking of the, the carriages when we actually land this on the Mun. Spoiler alert again. But... Regardless, I think it turned out well nonetheless. So in terms of the actual rotor setup for this thing, we have obviously one main rotor in the center that drives the wheel. The other rotor on the other side is just there for balance purposes. That's just unlocked, not motorized. It's just there to act as a free moving axle. And then there are um, rotors attaching the carriages to the wheel itself. Obviously, if they were just attached to the wheel rigidly, they would not rotate and keep the carriages level. So as Kerbals go around the wheel, they will be inverted through 360 degrees, which is not a very comfortable thing to be subjected to. So we've got the things freely spinning by uh, having rotors without power and without locks built into them, uh, attaching them to the wheel, and that lets them freely sit there and maintain a level seating position. That's the that's the setup there. And I'm going for this catamaran setup for the booster just because, well, I'm going to show you a little launch strategy. My first attempt at building a rocket for this thing involved having the Ferris wheel perched precariously on top of a conventional, I say conventional in the loosest sense of the term here, conventional style rocket in that it's just a vertical stack with the payload on top. I'm going to show a clip of this, a clip of that rocket flying along before I show you the launch of this one just because it's quite a funny launch. It was certainly one of my more janky creations. Unfortunately, I accidentally deleted the booster because I wanted to test the Ferris wheel again and accident so I deleted the booster underneath and then accidentally clicked save. But I didn't realize I clicked save until I came back later in the day after closing Kerbal Space Program and saving the craft. So it was uh, it was just a real nightmare. If in case you're wondering why I wanted to test the craft again, it was because I've used lots of struts to attach this thing to the rocket and I wanted to make sure I hadn't accidentally strutted some of the frame of the Ferris wheel to the wheel itself. Thus, meaning it wouldn't be able to move when we when we landed on the Mun, which I have done before, but it's something similar with a spinning station in the past. So I wanted to make sure I didn't do it for this one, because as you can see, 
as we <laughs> launch. This was the uh, the first draft rocket that I actually was planning on using for this video until I deleted the craft by accident and then the thought to myself, that's probably for the best. This is a horrible rocket and it has no right, you know, be showing showing it as a good example of a craft on this channel. So enjoy this wobbly little thing as it flies along and then in a second after we kind of I won't show you the entire flight obviously I'll just show you kind of the flight with the first stage here because that was obviously the more exciting part of the flight as we got to the more thicker parts of the atmosphere the wobbliness wasn't really an issue anyway that that was well that was that flight there we're gonna now cut to this launch here and I can show you how it's done a little bit better so already far more stable. Though I did very quickly decide to rotate this thing just so the actual ferris wheel was uh, how to, uh, basically flying like it is now. The reason for this is because when those side boosters detach, if we were flying in the original orientation there was a risk that the top booster would kind of fall straight down with, you know, gravity and hit the ferris wheel. Like this, they will fall away and there is very little risk of it impacting the, uh, the wheel or indeed the support structure itself. But yeah, it is a it is a beautiful day for a launch. If I do say so myself, our uh, twenty wait no, is it twenty? We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, eighteen. Excuse me, our eighteen brave, mm, possibly foolhardy Kerbals are very excited for their trip to the Mun to enjoy the Ferris wheel. I didn't tell them it was a one-way trip, so that is going to be a somewhat depressing realization when we're there. But hey. At least they have a nice ferris wheel. No way to disembark those carriages either. There's no doors. So I hope they enjoy themselves. I did pack some food and uh, they've all got a book just to share the cabin. Uh, so th they should be fine. Uh, it it'll be fine. Anyway, we are now getting towards uh, the f end of the first stage. We can deploy the second stage. Now, guys, I'm going to level with you. I tested this craft with the original rocket's design and then obviously I came to film it and realized I'd actually deleted it and it was getting pretty tight. I am recording this commentary on Friday and I finished building the rocket not that long ago and I was like I need to get this video ready for Saturday so I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna YOLO it. We're not gonna test it. We'll do it live. We ended up with a lot more fuel than we really needed so sorry about that. This stage that we're burning here this can get us to the Mun surface and land us and all that. We do have the vector stage after- ooh there's a little Mun shadow on the surface of Kevin there. We do have the vector stage afterwards that will, I, I designed that to do the landing and the vector engines themselves have lots and lots of gimbal so they can uh, handle the uh, rather unbalanced payload. Although I suppose the payload's not too unbalanced, to be honest. Well, the way I'm controlling this thing, because as you can see, none of the command pods or probe cores or anything like that are pointing centrally, like within this craft's, at a point that aligns with this craft's center of mass. I do have a junior docking port on the side of one of those carriages. The frontmost carriage that you can't see, because whenever I talk about what's happening in the footage, I cut away to the map screen, but you guys are used to this by now. The frontmost carriage, when you see it, has a small junior docking port facing forwards. That's how I'm able to control this ship reasonably. Uh, I bound the control from here action to action group one, and I just made sure I pressed that button before I launched this craft, and that's how this thing remains controllable. I do this for a lot of my crafts that don't have a probe core or a command pod that aligns along the craft's center of mass. I stick a probe core somewhere in the center, and I use that as the control point rather than a command pod. And here we are doing our burn for the man with our rhino engines, which are very powerful, so we do end up overshooting a little bit. Spoiler alert, you'll see me doing that here, so I have to do a quick... A quick rewind, bit of a rewind time, just to uh, undo that. I think I had to do it twice actually because it uh, didn't work too well. And one thing that was weird, uh, I suppose it's not, maybe I actually clicked the skip orbit button or something because our MUN encounter actually occurs in two orbits time, not one orbits time. I didn't, I, maybe I should go back and check the footage. Did I click the skip orbit button or did I just do something weird that um, I, I just overlooked something and that's why it ended up like this. This has never happened to me before. So I thought that was kind of weird. No, I just saw on the map screen it's set up to be this orbit. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. Yeah, look, we managed to get it there and then we didn't. Now we get it. Am I dumb? Did I, am I blind? Did I miss it? Am I missing something? Whatever. Doesn't matter. We still got an encounter with the Mun regardless, so I'm going to take it as a win. Uh, and here we are getting towards our Mun periapsis. We can begin our circularization. And uh, from there, we can pick our landing spot. The reason I wanted to circularize first, well, firstly, because it's good practice. Secondly, I wanted to be very specific when it came to choosing my landing site. And that is another reason why, although I did put a 
probably a bit too much Delta V into this craft. The original design also had quite a lot of surplus Delta V, just because whenever you're trying to land somewhere specific in Kerbal Space Program, and I have talked about this a bit in my Blunderbird series, which, where I'm rescuing other Kerbals, so I am also landing in very specific spots. You want a little bit more fuel just to do any kind of adjustments and change your trajectory if your landing's not going to get spot on. In this case, I wanted to land this thing on somewhere that was perfectly flat, which meant that I, you know, I can't really tell until I'm getting close to the surface if where I'm landing is going to be very appropriate. So I wanted lots and lots of extra fuel so we could adjust our landing spot and not have to worry about, you know, running out of, you know, fuel. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm killing off all of our surface velocity so that our actual descent is pretty much vertical. The actual structure of the Ferris wheel supports doesn't hold up very well when it's sitting at a 45 degree angle with engines burning for very long. Normally, I would do a kind of suicide burn trajectory where I just automatically hold retrograde on the nav ball and let this thing kill off its vertical and horizontal velocity at the same sort of pace. That's just the most efficient way to do a landing. But in this case, we have enough delta V to do things inefficiently. And in this case, this was far safer in terms of preserving the structural integrity of the Ferris wheel. I love how I'm concerned about safety in a mission as ridiculous as this, but I hope you guys understand. And then we can continue the descent. Now, the Ferris wheel is still strutted together, attached to these vector engines. That's why the whole thing's not freely spinning and why the carriages are remaining locked in place. Yes, I could lock the rotors, but I just don't trust them. I feel like they would start spinning against the torque of the engines or something. Not sure. Didn't really want to find out the hard way, so I decided to strut things together just to be safe. Some of you may wonder why I didn't use auto strut. Auto strut, especially for spindly structures like this with lots and lots of appendages and uh, clipping together of parts and lots of parts of the same mass. It doesn't really work. It, the Kraken just eats it up. The whole thing shakes itself to death. So I didn't want to have to rely on auto struts. So that's why there's still lots of struts holding this thing together. My hope was that the uh, Rhino engines would be destroyed on impacting on the Mun, but they didn't. So. Never mind. At least that breaks up the monotony of the Mun scenery that these Kerbals are going to have to endure for all of eternity. So, <laughs> there's that. There's that. We will be destroying the Vector engines, though. They have a probe core attached to them, so we can pilot them away from the Ferris wheel and leave the whole thing untouched. It maybe would have been kinder for me to leave them attached so there was some feasible way for these Kerbals to get home, but how could I fire up the Ferris wheel's rotors with those things attached? I hope they see my point. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. Anyway, we're going to fire it, do a quick puff with the Vector engines just so it will automatically clear itself in the Ferris wheel. Then we can switch to the craft, throttle up, and just burn sideways. Like, not to a point where it's going to just get back into orbit. Not that that was really an issue because it's going to take no time at all to leave physics range, at which point the Vector engines will cut out. And then it will smash into the Mun surface at relatively high speed, destroying it. Now, for some reason, you have to basically lock and then re-unlock the rotors for the carriages in order for them to respond i guess that's just to update the physics state or something and now you can see they are freely aligning i'm just sort of activating time warp not physical actual time warp so that they stop and then they'll carry on. it's just a quicker way of slowing down that might that's the way i am um, when i'm adjusting my ship's trajectory on the nav ball by using the auto sas i can make it stop on a dime by quickly acting time activating time warp and deactivating it little life hack for you there Anyway, we've now activated the rotor. I set the RPM to as low as it can go, which is five. And I set the torque nice and low as well. With a little music playing as well. Hopefully I won't get copyright struck. And as you can see, our Kerbals are loving it. Everything is going great. There was some a few, few graphical glitches here and there. But for the most part, I'd say this pretty well. Our, our Kerbals there are enjoying this thing very much. Now, unfortunately, because of the speed, the RPM is still a little bit too fast. So every so often I just have to cut the power to the rotor and let it just spin freely under its own kind of momentum and then fire it up again once it gets too slow and kind of do that to kind of keep this thing going at a realistic pace. But I know you guys don't want to see a realistic pace. You want to see me take this thing as fast as it will go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set the RPM and the torque to their highest settings and we're just going to let this thing spin. And I'm sure our Kerbals will enjoy it because they don't have a choice in the matter and Kerbals... They, oh, I've started to feel a bit queasy just looking at it, to be quite honest. Uh, Kerbals, they enjoy their... Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, they probably don't enjoy these explosions happening in very close proximity. Jebediah is not among them, so... Oh, no, never mind. We cut away, and they are relaxed. They are. <laughs> I love the juxtaposition of them just happily looking around, smiling out the windows whilst we cut to the exterior shot of this awful thing. But, uh, yeah, I think you guys get the picture. Let's not subject the Kerbals to something I guess they were enjoying. But as you can see, the uh, 
<laughs> the radius of the Ferris wheel was gradually increasing as the physics stretched those uh, structural um, scaffolds, and I didn't want the uh, carriages to impact the surface of the man. So we can just stop that and get this thing spinning at a realistic pace. To be honest, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load a quick save I made before we started this ludicrous speed experiment, just so we can get those weight ballasts back. And there we are, freely spinning once again. And we have there. There is the completion of the Planet Coaster crossover. If you want to watch the Planet Coaster video where we build a Ferris wheel on Wednesday, where that will be on Wednesday. There's a link to my Planet Coaster series if you'd like to watch that. I feel like I should advertise it more. There's another video on the right that was chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. And I've now run out of video, and so I'm just gonna have to leave it there. Goodbye.